Hello and welcome to another DSpace Learning Bit podcast. Today we talk about combining level three and four virtual ECUs in one simulation. I'm talking with Andre Hildebrand, product manager for Vios. Hi, Andre, and thanks for joining me today. Hi, it's great to be here. So what is the difference between classic software in the loop and hardware simulation? I brought some slides to explain this better. So um, on the bottom, what you can see here are different levels of virtual ECU. These levels are defined in a white paper from ProStep. But I would like to distinguish between two different categories here. First, we have up to level three, um, where, where we can compile for, for a host PC. And then we have level four, when, when, where we can compile the virtual ECUs for the real target. So let me talk about the up to level three first. So this is what we usually also consider as standard or classical ZIL simulation. So there, we, we, we just take some software components, as many as possible, which are available, like software components from application layer and, and middleware or basic software and so on. But we do not include any hardware dependencies, which means we, we, we just remove uh, modules like like uh, MCAL drivers or even the operating system and replace them by modified ones so that the virtual issue can be compiled on a standard Windows PC or Linux if you want to have it. This means that that you can, can execute them on a standard host PC and we use a simulator which is called VEOS uh, to, to, to execute them and also to, to take care of a synchronized communication here. The advantage of this approach is that you can start very, very early of the development phase. So even when you have a single software component ready, you can already start testing. And you can start uh, test through the whole development process until you have the full code. And it's fast. You have a fast but still accurate and synchronous simulation. Uh, These are the main advantages here. When we talk about um, level four, and then we, we, we include some specific hardware because we want to compile it to the target hardware. So, so, so from the development process, we take all artifacts which are already there, you know, like application, also middleware, we include everything, the operating system, MCAL drivers, and so on. But they're compiled for a specific target, which is obviously not the host PC. So we, we need a simulator, Plus, we need a hardware model. Here are also some different uh, dif uh, differences between uh, level 4A and B. For example, um, you, you can start with only translating CPU instructions, which is called instruction set simulation. But you can also include um, the peripheral hardware, like CAN controllers, like memory, stuff like that. That means that, that for each of these virtual uh, ECUs, the level four virtual ECUs, you need a specific hardware model. This makes the simulation very accurate. You can even uh, simulate timing effects, like task overruns, like uh, race conditions if you have a multi-core system. On the other hand, this also slows down the simulation. You really get a much slower simulation compared to standard ZIL, and you're restricted or limited to this specific hardware. So these are the basic differences between uh, up to level three uh, virtual use and then level four. Very interesting. So can a user combine both approaches here? Yes, definitely. So um, just to start, um, both are just simulators. So our software in the loop simulator is called VEOS, and it's just this standard simulator. You can include not only virtual ECUs, but any kind of plant model or whatever you like, FMUs and so on. And you have a full network and can simulate in here as well. On the other hand, then you have this level four simulator. It can be any hardware simulator. So we are not talking about a specific one. VEOS provides you with a co-simulation API. So, so you have a API in VEOS, it's very easy to, to configure it. Yeah, you can, can have a JSON file and some really basic description in there. It's 
fairly simple. And you have an attached C library to it. And the C library can then be integrated in the specific simulator. Of course, this last step uh, uh, is really depending on the specific simulator. Yeah. It can be directly integrated. Sometimes you have to, to create a little uh, bridge application or so on, but this really depends on the other one. But in general, we can combine both simulators in here and we, we get a synchronized simulation out of it. That's great. So for which use cases does it make sense to combine these two approaches? In general, there are a lot of different use cases where this makes sense. I brought just two. Um, the first one is just consider you have already some virtual ECUs, let's say level three, but there's this one virtual ECU you cannot virtualize because you don't have access to the code. You cannot remove the hardware dependencies or it's for the wrong architecture. Maybe it's developed for ARM architecture. Then you can replace this one by a level four virtual ECU. Focus is still functional testing of, of this whole network here. You can still get fast feedback on functional behavior and all that stuff, but, but you have included both uh, different strategies here. And on the other hand, what you also can do, and that's the second one here, is uh, you can do more hardware related tests. So you can really front load real HAL tests. There you, you can, for example, look for task overruns and, and things like that. There it really makes sense to have this level four simulator plus um, our SIL simulator VEOS because you can reuse many of the infrastructure of the HAL test, yeah, like, like the test itself the models and so on, and they are fully compatible with Veos. So there it really makes sense to, to combine these both simulators again. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Andre, for speaking with me today and answering some important questions on this topic. For all of you watching, please feel free to visit our website at www.dspace.com and submit any questions or topics that interest you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below and follow us for more exciting content. Thank you and have a great day. DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.